we're beginning our second section of our first chapter, representing motion. This time the focus is on numbers. Putting numbers on nature is its title. It's really considering the position of an object with respect to a certain time. So as we begin to understand motion further, we're starting to make some quantitative measurements. Quantitative, of course, are numbers. And all numbers in physics, as well as any science, not only require a certain magnitude, but a correct unit with that number as well. And if we include the direction of a particular object, we turn that um, number, unit, and direction into something known as a vector quantity. So beginning an analysis of a motion diagram, we begin to, to study the object's position with respect to time. That motion of an object can move only in a straight line, thinking of like an elevator moving up and down a shaft. There is no possibility of moving it uh, in any other direction but in a linear fashion. That's the focus of this particular uh, chapter. And again, we represented last uh, little video lesson about the four different types of motion. The first, the focus here being a straight line. And we'll move into projectile, followed by circular, followed by rotational mo uh, motion as we progress through chapters in the future. So what kind of numbers and how do we represent those numbers in nature with magnitude and direction? And the heart of that answer lies in the system known as a coordinate system. And really just thinking about an x, y axis and a number line moving to the left, to the right on a number line where each individual particle represents, each individual space on the number line represents a certain magnitude in this one dimensional form. So with respect to position, we define that as the location at a particular instant in time. The origin is a convenient reference point. Now in an x, y axis, we often think of the origin where the x and the y often intersect at zero. But in nature, we're not standing on an x, y axis. Our origin might be a specific location of convenience. It might be the local church. It might be the local grocery store. You know, I'm two miles west of the plums market here on, on Whitehall Road. That is a specific position with respect to an origin. And we'll consider which side of the object. Are you to the north, south, east, or west of the actual origin? The origin is a convenient spot in which we measure the reference point. On an x, y axis, it's often the zero, zero mark. So we begin to consider position and time in this particular example. Let's suppose in a linear fashion, so just a straight run, we have a symbol that represents the start. Let's call that time zero or position zero. This is the symbol or coordinate used to represent positions along this uh, particular axis. As time is going by, our runner is making progress towards the finish line. This is representing a coordinate system. The position of an object located along any particular linear fashion, a coordinate system. Notice that at the start time, 10 meters, 20 meters, 30 meters, 40 meters, 50 meters. The x-axis here is representing meters or distance. The units in which x is measured are going to be labeled right on that coordinate system. The start of the race is a natural choice for the origin. This is my beginning point. This is where I'm going to finish. An e equal distance have been marked off on this coordinate system. Now, at each time, the object is at some particular position. And we're free to choose the origin of time. Typically, we, we start with time equals zero. But sometimes it makes sense to consider a different position. And let's consider the following. We understand that at time zero, notice this is equal distance, a runner begins the race. As a runner begins the race, if they're not moving and begins, they start to speed up. So I would see or consider speeding up with a motion diagram Speeding up would show an increasing distance between the objects. A constant velocity or maximum speed held over a course of time would be shown with equal distance between the dots. And if an object is slowing down, 
we would see that the space between them is decreasing. The motion diagram is representing time. We get a feel for the velocity from the dots. The coordinate system is representing distance. We can see at any particular moment in time how far the runner has come close from the start to the finish. How close are they to the finish line? With this example, this one to me makes no sense that it would be representing this runner. It's the opposite. They have a constant velocity and then they're slowing down. Well, the runner isn't going to slow down as they finish, you know, approach the finish line. So with this particular runner, this one makes more sense that they're speeding up. Now that might be a very fast runner, but you can see from the beginning they speed up and reach their maximum speed as they cross the finish line. With the motion particle diagram, we can see that this particular um, representation is of deceleration. So it's actually showing us, if you examine this, this would be a car that's braking. We have constant velocity, and then they start to slow down when they apply the brakes. Perhaps we'd like to know how long it takes to brake. And the origin then becomes of interest to us at time zero. If time zero is the moment I apply the brake, I can see how long it took to come to a complete stop. So all of this is just helping me illustrate that the origin is a convenient point of which the interesting part begins. It might be the start of a race. It might be the point where brakes are applied. We have further examples uh, in our text as well showing other illustrations. If you wanted to turn to figure 6, 7, or actually uh, 9, we can see some other diagrams as well. Let me just put some of these pictures up here quickly. Here's the first one I'll put up. It's figure 7 from our text. The coordinate system used to describe objects along a country road. So for instance, this is representing distance and it's labeled on the axis required that we're measuring in miles. The previous example had meters. The origin is the post office. The car is four miles east of the post office. East, if I just think of west, east on a coordinate system. Four miles east, representing a positive four miles. Now we know there's no such thing as negative distance. You can't go negative five miles. But the negative sign is by convention to show us we're actually heading west to the point of origin. This particular cow, yeah, it's a cow, is five miles to the left, which is west of the origin. The positive and the negative sign really is just a convention to let you know if it's west or if it's east of the point of origin. And that might be further clarified if you study this picture in our text. If the post office is the origin, if your position is in the positive direction, you're heading east. If it's in the negative direction, you're heading west. The sign is convention to let us know direction, not to tell us that the actual distance is of negative value. Yet another example of a um, just a one-dimensional motion diagram. This is one we studied from the PowerPoint. Here's the second example where we have a speeder going down a hill. We can see that they'd be accelerating due to gravity. The x axis, the origin, is given the distance of meters. Positive values of x extend to the right. Negative values of x extend to the left, which in this particular case would be upward, up the slope, and the positive values would be um, going down the slope. So just getting a feel for the different ways we, re we represent uh, position and time using motion diagrams and a coordinate system. We'll focus on this term next. It's known as displacement. Defined, displacement is saying it's the change in position of an object as it moves from an initial position to the final position. The change in position, this little Greek symbol is the symbol that reads delta. It is a Greek symbol, it's a triangle. And when I see that we read delta x, but we really mean the change in x. If 
x represented by this coordinate system, if I start at dot 50 and I end at point 150, what is the change in my distance? Whenever we're asked for change, think final, final minus initial. My final value of 150, from the initial value of 50, we can see that we've changed, which is the feet, feet, not meters. We've changed 100 feet from our starting point. Notice it's not from the origin, the intersection of our um, two streets here, but from the initial to final, I've moved 100 feet. You might be asked, you know, compared to the origin, how far have you moved? Well, I could simply see that would be 150 feet from the origin, but the total distance of displacement is simply 100 feet from initial to final. The change is represented by the delta sign. The delta is read as change. The change in position from an object's initial spot to its final spot. Let's check for understanding. I'll read it through and you, you, you read with me. It's saying Maria is at a position, x equal 23. She undergoes a displacement of negative 50 meters. What's her final position? And friends, as we began, model first, math second. Model first, math second. Let's create a coordinate system. We call that an x-axis. She begins at a position of x equal 23 meters. Let's create a point of origin and call that position 0. At position 23, this is what we would call Maria's initial position. She undergoes a displacement, a movement, moving from place to place is displacement, to negative 50 meters. From the point of origin, moving west to negative 50 meters. What is her final position? She undergoes a change of negative 50. Oh no, I'm reading this wrong, friends. Let me back my bus up. I so apologize. The, the change... ...is 50. See what I did? I didn't read carefully. <laughs> I'm so glad I caught myself. You might have done the same thing. Rereading, making a model, so helpful. We can often catch ourselves in mistakes. I just did. <laughs> We're being asked, what was her final position? Solve for the final position when we knew the initial was 23. See what I've done? I didn't move from the origin to negative 50. The total displacement was 50 um, units to the left. 50 units to the left, negative 50. Algebra says we're going to add 23 to both sides. So on the, let me move that up, on the right side, we've isolated our variable, the final destination, her final position. When I take a negative 50, and add a positive 23, starting at a positive 23, I move over 50 units to the left. Where will I land? We're landing at a negative 27 meters. But the total distance between the initial and the final is 50 meters. They moved 50 meters to the left. The negative sign told us that. I ended at negative 27 meters. That simply means from the point of origin to my final resting place, I'm moving in the west to the left of the origin. I've just stressed <laughs> a very important fact as we, quote, check for understanding. Read, 
then reread the problem to prevent a simple math mistake, which I started to do. I taught myself by rereading the problem. It's a good strategy. And here this slide just verifies that we indeed predicted correctly negative 27 meters. Let's try another check for understanding. We have two runners jogging along the track, runner A and runner B. The positions are shown at one second time intervals. Which runner is moving faster? Let's get our bearings with what we're seeing. This is constant distance. Every 10 meters has been marked on our coordinate system. Meters has been labeled as the unit. Reader A or runner A from point 1 to point 2, point 2 to point 3, and so forth. Take a look at the distance he traveled in one second. Compare that to the distance runner B traveled in one second. Who is running faster? And this might be, if we just want to say, oh, look, you crossed the finish line first. That's not what it's showing, is it? Comparing our initial points, they started together. Runner A is a little bit ahead. A little bit ahead yet. Increasingly, runner A is taking off to the races to where here is the time they finished. And I can see time had to go by before runner B even crossed the line. Runner A clearly won this race. I notice that because there's a greater space between the little dots in our motion diagram. And we indeed matched our answer. Good work. Two runners are jogging along a track, and the times at each position are shown. Which runner is moving faster? So we have the coordinate system set up for meters. Runner A has more dots than runner B. But what's of interest is that they're lining up at exactly the same place. I just snapped my picture more often for runner A. I snapped a picture every one second. I snapped a picture alternating seconds. But indeed, they finished. They are running at the same speed. And we've shown ourselves correct. These motion diagrams, we can just practice staring them down and trying to glean information. What are some things we can say just by looking at the distance between the dots? That concludes section 1.2's notes, our lessons. You should pause, turn off the video, and complete this section's homework assignment. Just look at the problems from section 2. When you feel you've mastered this topic, you'll be ready to move on to section 3. Start up your videos when ready.